Emily Dickinson was born on December 10, 1830 in Amherst, Massachusetts. She lived a reclusive life in her bedroom, and her only form of communication near the end of her life got to be only through letters. Some people say that she suffered from epilepsy or depression. In fact, her mother was so depressed that it could have affected her, but I think she grew tired of people not understanding her. In fact, um, to a letter that she sent to someone one time, she said that she herself experienced a terror of her own that she couldn't tell anyone. And unless Emily Dickinson's ghost cares to fill us in, we'll never know either. So, there's that. Emily Dickinson was very educated and very well read. She also had a very well read family. Um, she had plenty of books in her room, but she was limited as her father censored what she could read. It was only until it wasn't until she met Benjamin Newton, who worked for her father, that she was able to read what she wanted to read because he would um, grab a couple of, couple of books from her father's office and sneak them up to Emily's room so she could read them. She attended Amherst Academy, which is now Amherst College, for seven years, and this is where she would meet her lifelong best friend and sister-in-law, Sue Gilbert who we will talk about in a minute because, wow. When Emily Dickinson died, some of her work ended up at Harvard with Mabel Loomis Todd, who we'll also talk about in a minute, and some of it ended up at Amherst College, and that feud between those two colleges still exists today. Thanks to her father, Emily Dickinson got to spend a lot of time in her own conservatory that her father built for her in the late 1850s. Unfortunately, it was dismantled in 1916, but it was rebuilt in 2017 and reopened in 2019. Upon rebuilding, they actually found a lot of things from the original conservatory, like the window sashes, uh, shutters, the original door, and even the concrete that the original conservatory stood on. And this is a look inside the conservatory. Really pretty. I love the windows. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is some of her recipes. She was known for her baking and gardening more than she was her poetry in her lifetime. I think it's so cool to see her handwriting. And if you think about it, this is what her house would smell like when she would bake these things. And um, yeah, I just love it. And you can see the stains, which is just awesome. Here you can see three pieces of gingerbread, and that is because I did make Emily Dickinson's gingerbread. It was very yummy. Um, it was very thick, and that might have been a byproduct of how much molasses she put in there. I don't know anyone who puts molasses in their gingerbread, but it was really good. I even put it in a basket because a little fun fact about Emily Dickinson was that she did love children. and um, She stayed in her bedroom, but when she would see children on the grass outside of her window, she would run downstairs, grab anything that she could you know, muster up inside that one basket, like her treats that she baked and stuff. She would run back upstairs, grab a basket that sat on her dresser, and she would put all the treats in there. She would attach a string to it and trickle the basket down to the children from her bedroom so they could have it. And if she did run out of cake, she would use raisins, which they ate like candy. Here, um, this is a surviving letter that she sent to someone. She always labeled her letters, open me carefully, and she would attach flowers that she planted and nurtured. Oh, this is where all the magic happened. That tiny square desk and really cute desk lamp. And I love that wallpaper too, honestly. In the drawer of this tiny desk was where all of her poetry was found, all of her poems, and even her letters, some of them. Um, she did find inspiration from this window. She would look out to the garden that unfortunately does not exist anymore, and funerals would happen outside of that window all the time. I think that is probably another reason, along with many of her loved ones dying in her lifetime, that um, she would talk about death in her poems. Near the end of her life, she did experience pain in her eyes and partial eyesight loss. She did get it fixed eventually. She went to a doctor, but she was briefly unable to write due to those unfortunate events. Also, when people were editing her work, they took out dashes and um, took out the 
or made the horiz the vertical dashes that she had horizontal. So a lot of scholars think that it altered the way we were supposed to read Emily Dickinson's poems. So yeah, that stinks because it would have been awesome, but you know, people love to edit. Oh, this is a message from Mabel Lemons Todd, who was Austin Dickinson's mistress, the one who he cheated on Sue with. Um, this is a letter that Mabel wrote to her parents when she first came to Amherst and met Austin Dickinson. She said, I must tell you about the character of Amherst. It is a lady whom people call the myth. She is a sister of Mr. Dickinson and seems to be the climax of all family oddity. She has not been outside of her house in 15 years except once to see a new church when she crept out at night and viewed it by moonlight. I think that this tells um, a lot about Emily Dickinson, the way she chose to live her life, the way she chose to go out in public, which was at night time. I think it is so cool to see what another person, how another person would view Emily Dickinson in that time. Unfortunately, I did have to shorten it for the purpose of this presentation, but I highly encourage you to read the entire letter because it is full of interesting things. Wow, is there so much to say about Emily Dickinson and Sue Gilbert. Um, scholars believe that there was, there was something going on between Emily Dickinson and Sue Gilbert that went far beyond friendship. I'm actually curious myself when I went and bought a book from Amazon full of the letters between the two of them, but little Miss Coronavirus said no, that I was not going to figure it out, but that's okay. Anyway, um, there is so much to say about these two, but for the purpose of this presentation, I do have to keep it short. It is so clear in this letter that she once wrote to Sue how much she loved her. Sue was the only person who understood Emily so deeply, and they actually ended up living right beside each other, and there was said to be a corridor of grass between the two homes and they would walk they would walk the corridor and exchange letters almost every day. But yeah, they were best friends and she was really pretty. Okay, Benjamin Newton. This is the man who worked in her father's office. She was drawn to him for they shared a fascination with literature and I do believe that that was her definition of love. Just finding someone who found the ecstasy in life as she did and understood the world as she did, the things that make the world so mysterious and would travel through her mind with her. I truly do think that was her definition of love. I mean, oh, wow, there's so much to say there. He, he taught her a lot and she loved to learn from him. That is also what made her drawn to him, that she could learn from him. I think she saw love in a different way. It was just wonderful, but he tragically died of tuberculosis before Emily achieved the greatness he had foreseen for her because he did encourage her so much in her poetry, even though back then it was men were just, you know, kind of like afraid of female scholars. The end, but not really. She still lives, though she died, she still lives on, and she is the... Only Dickinson we talk about in like 200 years. She was buried in one of the white dresses she liked to wear in her later years with violets pinned to the collar by her sister Lavinia. And this is a surviving dress, her last surviving dress. Now we have reached the end. Emily Dickinson did die on May 15th, 1886. She is one of the greatest American poets and one of the world's biggest mysteries and I love that so much about her. There is so much more about her that goes far beyond this presentation, but I did have to shorten it for I was limited on time. She truly did see the ecstasy in life. and I, I just love that she is such a huge mystery. We might not ever know all aspects of Emily Dickinson in her life. We might only ever have our assumptions, but it is all still there for the people who do have the will to look. She was, she's just an adventure. She was a character for sure. I hope you enjoyed my presentation on Emily Dickinson and find her more interesting than you might have before.